Hi, my name is Trisha, and I'm a Fagor small appliance expert. I'm here today to talk to you about the Fagor 3-in-1 electric multi-cooker. I'll be walking you through the use of your new multi-cooker, and along the way, I'll be cooking up some delicious recipes. The Fagor 3-in-1 electric multi-cooker takes the place of three cooking units. It can be used as a pressure cooker, a slow cooker, and a rice cooker. In addition to these three options are the brown and warm functions. Brown is used to brown your foods before you start cooking. The warm setting will be used to keep your food warm after you're done cooking. It can also be used to reheat your food. The lid is equipped with components such as the pressure regulator knob, the safety valve, the floating valve, and the gasket. Make sure the gasket is properly placed inside the lid. It also has cool touch handles that will not heat up during the cooking process. The lid also comes with a self-locking pin that will automatically lock when you slide it into place. It will not unlock if there's pressure inside the unit. This is your pressure regulator knob that consists of three settings. The pressure setting is to be used when you're cooking on the pressure cooking or rice cooking function. The steam setting is used when you need to release the pressure in your cooker. Lastly, we have the clean setting, which releases the knob for cleaning if and when food particles get stuck in the knob. On the inside of the lid, right under the pressure regulator knob, is the anti-blocking case. Pull it towards yourself to release the pressure regulator knob for cleaning. The Fagor Multi-Cooker comes with a six quart removable cooking pot. This is where all your cooking ingredients will go. The pot is made of aluminum with a Teflon non-stick coating, which makes it very easy to clean and is PFOA free. We recommend washing the pot before you begin to use your multi-cooker. Lastly, we have our base or stationary cooking pot. This is what allows you to cook your food. It's very important that you not cook in the base. All cooking must be done in the removable cooking pot. On the base, you will see the control panel. The user-friendly electronic controls and LED screen are simple and straightforward, making it really easy to use. The controls allow you to select different cooking programs with the touch of a finger. The different cooking functions are two pressure cooking settings, rice cooker, two slow cooking settings, brown, and warm. The multi-cooker also comes with an instruction manual and a full color recipe book. Fagor also offers a stainless steel steamer basket for your electric multi-cooker that you can order directly through Fagor's website. The pressure cooking function allows you to cook food under pressure up to 70% faster than traditional cooking methods. It has both a high and a low pressure setting for versatility and better results. Each time you press either button, the cooking time will increase by one minute for that setting. It allows up to 99 minutes. The high pressure setting is equivalent to 9 PSI, or pounds per square inch. The low pressure setting is equivalent to 5 PSI. High pressure setting is used for when you're cooking more robust meals, such as meats or poultries. The low pressure setting is used when you're cooking more delicate meals, such as fish or vegetables. We'll start by making some delicious pulled pork at high pressure. Before cooking, make sure you place the removable cooking pot in the unit. Be sure that the silicone gasket and the pressure regulating valves are clean and in place. For the pulled pork, we're going to need a six pound Boston butt, a teaspoon of ground cumin, ground fennel seed, ground coriander, garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika, two cups of chicken broth, and one cup of barbecue sauce. When cooking foods under pressure, a minimum of one cup or eight ounces of liquid is required. Also, do not fill the pot more than two-thirds full with food or liquid. So let's start cooking. First, we'll start off by mixing all our spices together and rubbing them on the Boston butt. Now you season it with your salt and pepper. And now you put your meat into the cooker. Once it's in there, you're now ready to add your chicken stock and your barbecue sauce. Once all your ingredients are in, place the lid onto the multi-cooker, line up the locking side of the lid with the condensation collector on the unit, and turn it counterclockwise. 
Once the locking pin clicks into place, you can turn the pressure regulator knob to pressure. Choose the desired pressure setting by pressing the high button on the control panel. The light on the high button will flash and the digital display will read one. This equals one minute of cooking time. Remember, each time you press the button, the cooking time will increase by one minute. Set the desired time by pressing the button once for each minute or by continuously holding down the button. For this recipe, we're gonna set the cooking time for 75 minutes on high pressure. Press the start button to begin cooking. At this point, the indicator light will stop flashing. If you forget to select a cooking time or forget to press the start button, the unit will beep twice and the digital display will read zero after 30 seconds. Once you've pressed the start button, the unit will begin to build pressure. Do not worry if you do not see the timer counting down immediately. This just means that the unit has not reached pressure and cannot start cooking yet. Once the cooking time is up, the unit will beep to let you know that the pressure is ready to be released. You have two different pressure release methods. The first one is the natural release method. After the cooking time is up, the unit will switch itself to warm. At that point, the multi-cooker will release the pressure naturally on its own without turning the pressure regulator knob to steam. This will take several minutes. For the pulled pork, I use the natural release method. Since the pressure is released, I can now remove the lid. Remember, once you're done cooking, be sure to press the stop button. This will cause the unit to start cooling down and return to its natural state. Pull out the pork and begin shredding it. Once the pork is all shredded, you can spoon over the sauce. The second method is the quick release method, which I'll demonstrate in our next recipe. Our next recipe will be mussels with pasta. Because mussels are a more delicate food, we'll be cooking with our low pressure setting. For this recipe, you will need one pound of mussels, one medium onion chopped, three cloves of garlic minced, one cup of sun-dried tomatoes, a quarter cup of flat leaf parsley chopped, a quarter cup of basil chopped, half a cup of dry white wine, one cup of clam juice, and 16 ounces of pasta. This recipe calls for us to use the brown function on our food first, so let's start with that. It's very easy and convenient. To use the brown function, press the button marked brown and then the start button. At this point, the unit will start warming up, sort of like a skillet over a warm flame. The brown function can be used not only for garlic, but for meats too. I'm going to brown onions and garlic for one to two minutes. Once you're done browning, add the rest of your ingredients. You can break the pasta to fit it into the multi cooker. Once the lid is closed, make sure the pressure regulator knob is set to the pressure position. This recipe will need to cook for four minutes. Now that our cooking time is up and the unit has switched to warm, we're ready to release the pressure. I'll use the quick release method. Simply turn the regulator knob to the steam setting. The multi cooker will release all the steam out of the unit from the top where the pressure regulator knob is. Please be careful as the steam will be hot. Once all the steam is released, you can open the lid and enjoy pasta with mussels. Remember, as soon as the cooking time is up, the unit will automatically switch to warm. This will happen when you cook with any of the three main cooking functions. The warm setting can be used to reheat foods or to keep them warm. Pressure will not be created while using the warm setting, so it's okay to take the lid off. To use the warm function independently, all you need to do is press the warm button, which will cause the digital display to read zero. Once the zero is displayed, you can go ahead and press the start button to begin the program. The indicator light will stop flashing. To turn the program off, simply press the stop button. Next, I will walk you through how to use the slow cooking program. This program will allow you to cook slow cooker classics such as pot roasts, soups, and stews in up to nine and a half hours. The slow cooking function cooks your food slowly on either the low setting at 190 degrees or the high setting at 212 degrees. The slow cooker functions are a little different than the ones for pressure cooking. Press either the low or high slow cooker buttons depending on your recipe to increase the cooking time by 30 minute increments rather than one minute. 
these increments will be shown as 0.5 rather than 30. Just remember that 0.5 means a half hour or 30 minutes. For the high setting, let's make some delicious short ribs. For this recipe, we'll need three pounds of boneless beef short ribs, one large onion thinly sliced, one cup of prepared barbecue sauce, one cup of water, and one teaspoon of garlic powder along with salt and pepper. I already have the short ribs seasoned and browned and now I'm going to put them back into the unit. Stir in the onions and the garlic powder. I'll mix the barbecue sauce with the water and then add that to the cooker. Now I can cover the multi-cooker, turn the pressure regulator knob to steam and set the cooking setting. I'm going to be cooking on the high setting for eight hours. When the cooking time is up, remember that the unit will beep and automatically turn to the warm function until I press the stop button. At that point, I can open the multi-cooker, take out the short ribs, and cut them. I will just add a little extra sauce and serve it. Our next recipe will be a delicious chocolate bread pudding. For this recipe, we will need one cup of butter, a quarter cup of sugar, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, four eggs, one and a half cups of chocolate milk, a quarter cup of strong brew coffee, a half a cup of raisins, one cup of chopped pecans, preferably toasted, four cups of stale white bread in bite-sized pieces. Start off by beating the butter, the sugar, and the cinnamon with an electric mixer. After a short while, add the eggs and keep beating until it's fluffy. I've already done these steps in advance. I'll start by mixing in the chocolate milk, coffee, and raisins. Then I'll fold in the chocolate chips, pecans, and bread cubes. Once I have that nice and mixed, I can place it into the cooker. Now I put the lid on and set the timer for five hours on the low setting. Once the unit beeps, this means the food is ready. Open the lid away from yourself and serve the chocolate bread pudding with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. The rice cooking function is a six minute program that cooks dishes such as white rice, polenta, and risotto. We recommend only using the rice cooker for white rice and long grain rice. Other types of rice, such as brown rice, should be cooked using the pressure cooker function. For this recipe, we'll need one and a half cups of jasmine rice, two and a half cups of orange juice, half a tablespoon of ground coriander, two scallions chopped, one 11 ounce can of mandarin oranges drained, and a half a cup of chopped pecans. I'll start off by placing the rice, orange juice, and coriander in the cooker. Lock the lid in place, turn the pressure regulator knob to pressure, and press the rice cook button. The light on the rice cook button will flash and the digital display will read six. Press the start button to begin cooking. You'll see that the indicator light will stop flashing. The program will cook for six minutes from the moment it builds the right amount of pressure. When the cooking time ends, the unit will beep and automatically turn to the warm function. I've already released the pressure. I'm going to fluff it gently with a fork and add chopped scallions and oranges. When plating the individual portions, I can top it off with some pecans. Another great function of the multi-cooker is the delay time feature. This function allows you to delay your cooking process up to eight hours. To use the delay time feature, simply press the delay time button. The light under the button will blink and the panel will read 0.5, meaning half hour of delay. You can only use the delay time setting with slow cooking, pressure cooking, and rice cooker programs. Press the button until you reach the desired delay time. When setting your preferred delay time, the time will increase in half hour increments. Select the desired cooking program after setting your timer by pressing the corresponding program following the instructions for each program. Press the start button and the cooker will begin to cook after the delay time has lapsed. Say it's 2 p.m. and you want your dinner to be ready by 7 p.m. Your recipe calls for 15 minutes of high pressure cooking. You can program your delay time for four and a half hours and then pressure cooking program for 15 minutes. To do this, just press the delay time button until the panel reads 4.5.
and then the high pressure setting button until it reads 15. Then just press the start button and you're all set. The cooker will start cooking at 6.30 and be ready by 6.45. The unit will automatically switch to warm once the cooking time is done. Cleaning your electric multi-cooker is very easy. Simply start by unplugging the unit and letting it cool. Once the unit is cooled sufficiently, lift the removable cooking pot and wash it as you would a regular pot. The cooking pot is dishwasher safe. However, the rest of the unit is not. You can wipe around the outside of the unit if you wish, but do not submerge it in water. Next, you must remove and wash your silicone gasket with warm, soapy water. Before putting the gasket back into the lid, make sure that it's completely dry. Pull out the anti-locking case and with a brush, remove any food or foreign materials that may be lodged in the floating valve. With the anti-locking case still detached from the lid, turn the regulator knob counterclockwise to the clean setting and carefully lift. Run the knob under warm water to clean any particle buildup inside. Only use authentic FIGO replacement parts. Use of unauthorized parts may cause unit failure and will void any warranty. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, Fago America would love to hear from you. Call us at 1-800-207-0806, Monday to Friday. Visit us on the web at www.fagoramerica.com or email us at info at This video is for educational purposes only. Before using, please read your instruction manual thoroughly.